So this is uh, going to be the last video I'm making in 2022. And it's also going to be a cooking video. As you can tell from the title, we're going to be looking at baked ziti. Now, baked ziti was really made famous by the Sopranos. Uh, and a lot of people have become very curious about how to make it. And it's something that I make quite frequently. It's uh, probably the most popular dish in my house. It's certainly what I'm most frequently requested to make. Um, I do a vegetarian version of it because my wife's a vegetarian, but there is a meat version as well. And obviously there are a few variations on the theme. We'll mention them as I go along, but I'm going to make the version that I normally make uh, most frequently. It's really easy. Flavor-wise, it's remarkably similar to lasagna. In terms of complexity, it's about half the level of complexity as a lasagna. It's super easy to make. It takes about half an hour to prep and about an hour to cook. And part of the prep time bits are cooking. But the oven time is the, uh, the one hour. And the prep time where we make the marinara sauce and where we prepare the pasta and when we prepare the cheese, that's all about half an hour. So it takes about an hour and a half to make this dish. Uh, let's have a look at how I go about doing it. So we're going to prepare the ingredients. Uh, I put most things together, but I still need to chop this onion. And we use a small onion. Uh, nothing bigger than that is required. And that's as chopped as it needs to be. Or we can make that cut first and then slice like so. And um, just break them up a little bit. And that's the onion prepared. We'll set that aside for a moment. This is the pot we're going to use. Nothing too fancy. And we have a spoon. And we're going to use one tin of chopped tomatoes. And it's important when making baked ziti to make the marinara sauce a little bit more liquidy than you normally might. So as well as adding a glass of wine, I'm also going to add a glass of water. And the reason is, is that as this cooks, the pasta is going to absorb a lot of this liquid from this, which will infuse the flavor into it. It will also make it softer, which is why we only want to use al dente pasta uh, when we are putting it into bake. But again, because we know it's going to suck up a lot of fluid, we need to make it a little bit more moist, so we add the extra water as well. Next thing we want to add are our spices. So if we have a look here, I've got salt, sugar, and pepper. Those are the basics. Then we have basil, oregano, garlic granules, paprika, and as well as all of that, I'm just going to add a very light sprinkle of a little bit of cayenne pepper. You don't want to add too much of that. Uh, I think it's nice to add a little bit of bite with that, but you don't want to get carried away unless you like your food really hot and spicy. But this is, these are basically all uh, the spices laid out for you. Obviously, uh, all of this is, you don't have to worry about writing this down now. Uh, the recipe is in the description, so if you have a look there, it's all laid out for you. And I'm just going to add all of those now. In addition to which, like it or not, we're going to use a squirt of ketchup. And it's just one little squirt like that is plenty. Similarly, we're going to add some tomato puree. And again, a nice little squirt like that is plenty. And I'm now going to add some extra virgin olive oil and a good little drizzle of this. And again, that's plenty. And of course, now that we've added all of that lot, I'm just going to put these onions in as well. That's all the ingredients of the basic marinara sauce. Now, marinara sauce, we will just mix this up, and then I'm going to put on the heat. 
Marinara sauce is sometimes thought by some people to actually be a seafood uh, sauce because of the name. But it's a little bit misleading because the original meaning of marinara sauce was not food that came from the sea so much as food that came from mariners. Things like tomatoes and uh, other ingredients which came from faraway countries. I mean, for example, tomatoes came from the Americas originally, and they were brought back by the sailors or the mariners. Hence, marinara sauce is actually referring to what was for Italy at the time that word first came about, rather exotic foods. This may be a fairly typical blend of ingredients for Italian cooking. I will also say, however, that what's important to remember is that these foods did not originate in Italy, which is why if you look at, for example, a cookbook that has Roman food in it, the Romans were using very different ingredients because they didn't have access to quite a lot of these ingredients. They didn't have pasta, for example, back then. Uh, so a dish like this would have not existed in Italy. That said, this is not actually, contrary to popular belief, an Italian dish. It's quite specifically an Italian-American dish, so that it's something which uh, was developed in the United States in amongst Italian uh, neighborhoods. Now, what we're going to be doing at this stage, because there's quite a lot of liquid here, it'll take a few moments to come to a bit of a boil. Uh, I've got the temperature on high, and that's going to get a few bubbles to come up sooner rather than later. But as it begins to bubble, I'll lower the temperature systematically and then give it a stir, and then wait till it bubbles again, and then keep doing that until I get to a simmer temperature. The whole process takes a few minutes, but it's minutes worth spending, because you don't want to burn the bottom of this. Now, I will say that there, in the ordinary course of events, baked ziti is a meat dish, and normally you would have about 250 grams, or about 9 ounces, of uh, ground mince or ground beef, and you would fry that off, and add that to this, almost like a bolognese sauce. Alternatively, you might chop up some uh, sausages, Italian sweet sausages for preference, but I've used, I've done this, for example, in the past with Cumberland sausages. You can use different kinds if you want. And again, you just fry them off and add them to this at the early stage so that it will have a, a, a meat infusion in it. Uh, my wife is vegetarian, and so I do this without uh, meat normally. So this is the way I usually make it as a non-meat dish. It's not a vegan dish because as you'll see in a moment when we get to the cheeses, we're not using vegan cheeses. We are using regular cheese, but it is vegetarian. If you are vegan, by the way, and you have experience using uh, different cheeses and you want to experiment with this using vegan cheeses, uh, I'd love to hear in the comments from you uh, how your experiment gets on because that could be quite interesting in and of itself. So just by leaving out the meat and using vegan cheeses, potentially this could be a vegan dish as well. So you have some versatility with this. And uh, it's starting to come to temperature now. Um, most of this we're going to jump from one moment to the next, but I want this first stage just to give you an idea of how long it takes uh, while we bring it up to a simmer. But in fact, rather than being tedious, we're just going to skip to that using the magic of video. So at this point, I have a nice simmer on. And I want this to have time to cook, which is why I've waited until I have my simmer in the sauce before I begin boiling the water for the pasta. And one of the things I'm going to do is take some salt, and I am using sea salt, and I'm adding a goodly amount, because you want it salty like the sea. And what I'm going to do now is bring that to a boil. And once that's brought to a boil, then I'm going to add my pasta. Just put the lid on that so it'll happen a little faster. But while I'm waiting for that to come to the boil, I'm next going to prepare the cheese. Now, you use roughly 100 to 125 grams of cheese, more or less. Here I've got a, a 
nice ball of mozzarella. Am I in the shot? No, let's move the camera. Here we go. Now with the mozzarella, because this has been packed in liquid, uh, I'm just going to dry it off a little bit. Now in this case, I'm actually using a little bit more mozzarella because this is the packet was, uh, I think, 240 grams, although that counted the liquid as well. But I'm just going to use all of this. I, I could use less than this, but I'm going to use all of it. We're just going to very quickly grate this. Uh, it's not hard to do. This, If you're getting pre-grated mozzarella, uh, you, you probably use a little bit less than this, but this has, you know, part of the weight here is the, the moisture that's been absor absorbed by the mozzarella, and so that makes it a little heavier. The pre-grated stuff is dried, and um, but you've got a nice little quantity of that. I can go into the bowl. Uh, now, normally, the other main cheese that we tend to use is provolone. Now, provolone can be difficult to get, and what I often use is the, it's not a particular brand endorsement, but I do use this one quite frequently because it's readily available in my local shops. And I use the, um, the Emmental, which is better known by some people as Swiss cheese because of the holes in it. Uh, a nice little block like that is fine, and again, we're just going to create that real fast. And this will change the flavor. It gives it a, a, a slightly different flavor. But if you happen to like, if you like Emmental, you'll love this dish. Uh, if you try it with the provolone and find you don't like it with the provolone, you might actually prefer it with the Emmental. Some people do. Um, it's good either way. It's good. It's not that one is better than the other. They are slightly different. But because I have some difficulty getting a hold of provolone here, I sometimes use this as a substitute. And frankly, my family really like it. So, and so do I, for that matter. So I don't really have any issue um, about using. I have an issue about using this instead. It tastes good. That's the important point. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add my grated cheese. And, you know, when you're using the Parmesan, you can buy it properly and grate that. But if a little trick, you can get one of these sort of types of containers of pre-grated Parmesan. Pop the lid, break it up a little bit. And literally, the contents of one of these is actually like a nice measured dose. You will get hard chunks like that, so you'll need to break them up a little. But once you've actually mixed all of this up, you've got your basic uh, combination of cheeses. This is three out of the four cheeses that you're going to use. Uh, it is, I, to be honest, sometimes I think the pre-grated mozzarella is certainly easier to use. Uh, but if you're using fresher mozzarella like this that's packed in water, um, it certainly doesn't hurt the taste at all, and it's a little bit more work, but as you can see, not a great deal of work, and that's all nicely mixed together. Certainly quite sufficiently for our purposes here. The next thing we're going to do is add the ricotta. Now, if I just move this over here, this into center stage. The ricotta comes in a tub like this. This is a uh, 250 grams. So we're going to use half of this, which is again about 125 grams of ricotta, which is fine. Uh, and I'm literally just going to cut that in half, drain that liquid out. I don't, really want, I don't need that liquid. And I'm just going to pop half of that into there. And that's basically put the lid back on. That's basically the cheeses sorted out. And at this point the water for the pasta has begun to boil. 
So for some reason my camera switched off at just the wrong moment, so I'll just repeat a couple of things. This has had approximately 400, 450 grams, about a pound of pasta put into it. I'm using the penne because it's almost exactly the same as ziti and I can't get a hold of ziti here in the UK, but it's virtually identical, so no problem there. Uh, this goes in at this point because it's given the marinara sauce plenty of time to start cooking and it's got a little bit longer to go. Again, this marinara sauce, but that extra water that we put in instead of just the wine has made it more watery. But in the hour that this is going to spend in the oven, this pasta will absorb some of the liquid. So it'll balance out beautifully. And this is also why you don't want to cook that down till it's soft. You want to just cook it down till it's al dente because it's going to absorb more liquid when it's actually in the oven. And if you wait till it's as soft before you put these ingredients together, you're going to overdo it and it'll be like mush. So you want to avoid that. Uh, so right now, it's just a case of give this a gentle stir from time to time. Give this a gentle stir from time to time. Let that absorb enough liquid so that it becomes al dente. And then we move on to the next step. So at this point, this has been cooking now for about the last seven or eight minutes. And uh, that is chewy. It's no longer hard, but it's not yet soft. It's certainly not mushy. Very al dente. So this is a good place to stop. I'm just going to turn the stove top off. We're now going to do the next step. So I'm going to take the pasta. I'm just going to run it through a colander. I don't have to get every drop of liquid out. And I'm putting this right on top of the ricotta. Um, now, that's going to start to melt that ricotta down a little bit. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of the cheese and put most of it, not quite all of it, but most of it, I'm going to save a little bit, most of it goes on top, and similarly, i just give this a little stir, I'm going to put most of the sauce, not all of it, but certainly most of the solid matter, and I'm going to save a little bit of sauce in the bottom there, we'll come back to that in a minute. And at this point, what I need to do is just gently fold or stir everything around, I'm folding more than stirring, we don't have to be vicious with this. And what this is going to do is create an even consistency throughout. You will find when you're doing this, you might have a big lump of cheese at one point, And that just means it needs to be folded more till it's evenly distributed. It doesn't take long. Not even a minute. Maybe a minute. Yeah, that's enough. That'll do. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my oven dish. In this case, I'm using Pyrex. I like Pyrex. It's good stuff. You see what you're doing, and it's heat resistant. And I'm just going to scrape the contents into my oven dish. And I'm just going to... Manipulate it a little bit to make everything as even as possible. Uh, when you have a big blob of cheese like this on the spoon, I find just eating it is a simple solution. Now, next, I'm going to take what's left of this marinara sauce, and I'm going to just drizzle it around the top. Like that a little bit. So we have a layer of sauce on the top. And then I'm going to take the last bit of this cheese and again we're going to just sprinkle it I'm using a fork. I usually use my hands, but there we go. Uh, I'm just sprinkling that and spreading it over the top. Probably should have kept a little bit more back, but never mind. And that creates a nice little surface layer that will produce a nice little crust. 
And then we put the lid on it. Now I'm going to put the lid up. You can knock it up like this with the handles. I usually do it at a 40, at a 90 degree angle. Why? Because it, at the 45 minute mark after this has been in the oven, this hat lid has to come out. And it's very easy for me to just grab that and pull it rather than having to manipulate anything. So next is it goes in the oven. So at this point, we slip it into the preheated oven. And that's another thing. While we're doing all the other bits, preheat your oven. And then in it goes. And now I will set my timer for 45 minutes. And in 45 minutes, we'll come back and remove the lid. And that will then allow the top to make a nice little bit of a crust. So it's been 45 minutes. Time to take the lid off. And now we give it another 15 minutes and it'll be ready to come out of the oven. So we're going to let it rest a little bit because as you can see, or you may or may not be able to set off the power, but can pick it up. But some of the liquid in there is still boiling, so you still have a little bit of bubbling. But once this has had a few minutes to rest, and it's literally just one or two minutes is all it needs, just to finish, you know, rest, calm down. You have actually quite a nice little sort of crust on the top, so that's nice. I mean, this is... Um, this is no macaroni and cheese. This is really good. Uh, it, it's sort of the illegitimate love child of macaroni and cheese and lasagna, but it is just wonderful. So it's had a couple of minutes, literally just, I think, maybe two minutes. Uh, one of the nice things about having taken the lid out uh, 15 minutes ago, or 15 minutes before this came out, is that's too hot to touch, really. This is not, so I can control this. I'm just going to run a knife around the outside. And today, this is going to be feeding three of us, but I could just as easily feed four with this. This is quite a lot of food here. And um, so I'm just going to cut it into thirds. In this instance, uh, it probably is a bit too much to have this for three people instead of four but we really like it and don't care <laughs> uh, and it's then a case of popping it out and onto the plate and some of it will just require a little extra work with the spoon you say this is if you like pasta dishes you will love this because it is really, really tasty. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, and it's, as is mentioned in the recipe that's in the description, there are variations on the theme with this, and you can experiment with it and make it your own. Uh, like I say, it's super easy to make compared to something like lasagna. But a dish like that is a meal fit for a king, frankly. It's excellent, it's wonderful. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it uh, useful and enjoyable and Happy New Year because we're about to go into 2023. As I say, this is the last video and the last meal I'll be cooking this particular year. Uh, but we're going to finish on a high note with this. Uh, try it. You'll like it. Do like the video. Do click like. Do share the video. Do consider subscribing if you're not subscribed already. And if you do subscribe, click the bell icon so you'll see when the next one will drop. And uh, bon appétit. So we're going to let it rest a little bit because as you can see, or you may or may not be able to set off the power, but can pick it up. But some of the liquid in there is still boiling, so you still have a little bit of bubbling. But once this has had a few minutes to rest, and it's literally just one or two minutes is all it needs, just to finish, you know, rest, calm down. 
you have actually quite a nice little sort of crust on the top, so that's nice. I mean, this is um, this is no macaroni and cheese. This is really good. Uh, it, it's sort of the illegitimate love child of macaroni and cheese and lasagna, but it is just wonderful. So good. See you next time. Have a good one.